young child when his father Nuh السلام, asked him to join him in the ark Ya ma'ana he rejected and he would say that I will resort to a mountain that will protect me then the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had been promised by Allah said responded to him that there will be no protector at that day no mountains no high scrapers nothing will protect you from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the young child out of arrogance did not trust his father because of his previous knowledge or because of his lack of knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about his <coughs> qualities and he did not obey his father and the result as all of us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him drown in the sea as all other creatures that were available at that time this is one form of arrogance that happened by a young person whose father was a messenger of Allah and here is a very important lesson for us it's not just because we are Muslims we may be protected from this disease but we have to really practice Islam and to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully and his messenger and not to use our brains in this circle of divinity when a command that may be apparently it's against our way of thinking it's against of the natural phenomena that take place on the earth that we may think that this may not happen and that's why a lot of people as we are going to give some examples of the believers later on they should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than they trust what they see by their eyes what they learn from the knowledge of human beings not the divine knowledge and what they hear another example is the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam in his argument and debate with Namrud the king at that time when Namrud gathered the people his people and his army to witness this debate or this argument and then he asked Ibrahim alayhi salam what can your God do and I want you to focus from these examples because I want you to help me when we come to deduce the qualities of those people who suffer from this disease it's very important to know them their qualities to guard ourselves against these bad qualities and to keep us away from them he asked them what can your God do the king who had arrogance he was a representation of authority he had the power to rule the whole country and he thought usually people who have power suffer from this disease because you think because of the power of the command that you can give to your soldiers or to your assistants or to your people and they obey so you think that you have control over everything and you can do anything so when he heard about Ibrahim alayhi salam he started the argument with him and he told him what can your God do Ibrahim alayhi salam started with a very simple fact that's apparent to every human beings even to animals they can see it if this is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhyi wa yumit Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit Allah is the one who grants life and the one who takes out life don't you see that everybody sees that nobody grants life to other however Namrud the king out of his arrogance he did not submit to this and he wanted to show that this argument is incorrect and he wanted to show his power to the people then he responded to Ibrahim alayhi salam that he can do that and he called as you know that two people and he killed one of them and he lit the other one alive and he said that I am the one who granted this life and I am the one who deprived this from his life by killing him of course it was a very silly response 
However, the scholars say that because of his followers were bad people, and he wanted to deceive them, like فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَهُ فَأَطَاعُوهُ Yes. His people followed him, although they have seen that this is not a good argument at all, but he wanted to save his face in front of his people. Then Ibrahim السلام, resorted to a materialistic argument, which is far away from his ability to show that he is incapable of doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, in order to expose his foolishness to his people by telling him, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ So if this is the case, Allah is the one who brings the sun from the east. So can you bring it from the west? So immediately, the arrogant king could not respond, and he was stunned, and he could not utter a single word. And what happened is that he tried to retaliate against Ibrahim السلام, and he asked his followers to throw Ibrahim in fire. Another example which represents a different form of power is the example of Qarun. Qarun was given this ability by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely, the power of changing metals and things into gold. Whenever he can get a metal or something, he had the ability to change it into gold. And when he was asked, how could you do this? How did you manage to reach this level of changing these metals into gold? He used to attribute this quality that only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the manah, he is the grantor. He used to attribute this quality to himself. I made it myself. And because he took this quality from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he attributed it to himself, disregarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah punished him by making the earth swallow him and his house. This was a power, the financial power. When somebody becomes financially capable, usually there's a question mark about his possibility of falling a victim of this money and this wealth. Perhaps the most apparent example of arrogance in history is Fir'aun, the pharaoh of Egypt, who almost got all these forms of power in his hand, the physical or the bodily power, the power of technology that was shown in the advancement of his army. He had the strongest army at his time. He had the power of authority and commanding and legislating. He had all these powers gathered together into one. Of course, he had the power of properties or owning a lot of things to the degree that he used to say, أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكَ مِصْرِ Don't I possess and own the land of Egypt and the rivers that overflow in them? And he also, not only he had this form of arrogance rejecting the truth, but he has the other part as well. He used to look down upon Musa alayhi salam, who had, of course, Musa had a degree of blackness in his complexion, and he had this uh, accent in his, or problem in, of pronunciation in his mouth. And based on this, he used to compare himself with Musa alastum. Am I not better than this one? who cannot even articulate the meaning that he wants to express. And he used to call him Mahin. Uh, that means despised or second class person. And then the same argument that took place between Ibrahim السلام, and the king took place between him and Musa السلام. And he asked him, where is your Lord? 
and Musa alayhi salam pointed to the sky or the heaven and to the firmament and immediately he commanded his assistant Haman Ya Hamanu ibni li sarhan la'alli ablu al build a skyscraper for me so that I can see whether there's God or no God. Then his assistant Haman did what he was commanded to do. Then the Pharaoh climbed very high and looked to every direction and he did not see God. And he told the people, I see no God around me here and therefore there is no God. Not only that, he exceeded the limits and he made the worst statement that ever made.